In this chapter, we'll be continuing to talk about reproducible research and some of the tools you can use for that. One that I wanted to start with is the idea of organizing the directories that you have in a meaningful way so that as you move into larger projects, things are in a place that makes sense. So far, you've done a lot of your research and a lot of your R programming in a way that you could do a single R script for that. So we've talked about using projects and you might have a project for the class where you've had a script for each, each different in-class exercise or something like that, but it hasn't been anything really, really complex where you've really got a large set of data you're trying to keep track of and then different things that you're doing within a single project with the aim, for example, of a final paper. As you move in the class into doing your, your final group project, you will be moving into that phase though of having a larger project project where you're trying to put the pieces together to get to some final product like a paper and a presentation. Um, so I want to talk just a little bit about some ways to organize your project directories that support this. One that I think is really helpful is to have a few set directories in any project you do and then to have a separate R project for each kind of like um, a, a definable piece of research you're doing. And often that will come down to one R project directory per manuscript that you're trying to do. In some cases, they might line up with kind of like projects or grants. But for example, if you're working on a doctoral dissertation, you probably want to have one of these for each of your chapters. Or if you're using the same data set for several chapters in your dissertation, you might want to have one for your full dissertation. Um, I tend to have one per paper that we're trying to write. So some of the common subdirectories that are really useful to have in your R project are to have one for data that stores your data. If it takes a lot of work to pre-process or clean this data, if it's starting from a very large data set, for example, and, and the actual data you're using is just a small subset of that, you may want to also have a data raw directory that has your raw data and also the R scripts you're using to clean up data from the original source where you got it, whether that was either shared for someone or, or it came out of equipment. For example, if you're measuring something on a mass spectrometer or something like that, the file you get from the equipment, um, or if it's something that's administrative data, um, secondary data that you've collected from some, some other data source, you can put that in a raw data directory and then also have the scripts that clean it and then save the CSVs or other plain text files from that process in your data directory. And then in all of your R markdown and all of your figures and things like that, you can start from that cleaner set and that might save you a little bit of time and also gets you started with something that, that's a little bit um, more kind of geared to exactly what you're doing in that project. Another that you should have is an R directory. This is where you can put the code for any functions that you're using in the analysis. So if there are things that you are doing repeatedly, you can write an R code here that you source in your R markdown um, that, that has all of those different functions so that you don't have to define and write out long pieces of code in your R markdown every time you do that task. And then finally, you should keep all of your output documents in one subdirectory. A lot of times I'll call this something like reports or writing. Um, this can include the report that you're writing, the R markdown of that, but you can also use R markdown to make um, PDF slides. I think you can use it for PowerPoint slides now too. Um, I have used it in the past to make scientific posters as well, kind of PDFs of the posters that you would display at a scientific conference. So you could put all of those kinds of output products, the, the R markdown files you use to create those, you can put all of those in the reports directory. So I'm going to take the last few slides just to do a little bit of a review for our projects because you want to do this directory that's got that nice structure in terms of its subdirectories. But um, it's also you, important that you tag it with this kind of R project thing. And you've been doing that for a while. I know a lot of people in the class have been using R projects now since pretty early in the class and do that to collect together their co the code they're using for their in-class exercise. But if you aren't doing that regularly, as you move into this idea of lar doing larger projects, you certainly will want to get in the habit. So when you when you take a directory and make it into an R project, it's really only doing like kind of this little piece of magic on it. It's adding a file that's got this .rproj on the end, and that's just got some information 
um, that helps in keeping the project together and helps our studio work with it as a project. Once you do that, you've got a number of advantages over having just a directory without that. So you can easily open R into that R project. And we've seen before, so I've got now this practice R that we set up in slides much earlier in the class, but you can see that I can now move through different projects really easily. And as soon as I click on a different project, it will take me directly into that directory with all of those files. So right now I'm seeing all of the main level files for this practice R. But if I wanted to go into another example project, then it will change and then I have access to all of the files that are in that project. And so I can quickly navigate between these projects and it takes me right there where my working directory is right in that project directory and where I can see all of the files and all of the information. So those, the, that's one piece um, that it kind of automatically uses that as the working directory and shows you the files that are in that project as soon as you open up. But as we will see more today, another advantage is that it works really nicely with Git and GitHub. So we're going to start to talk about how to use Git and GitHub. And you really are going to benefit a lot if you are keeping your directories that you want to put under version control as our projects, because then our studio can, can integrate that piece in really nicely and it gives you a little window where you can do all the pieces you want to do with that. So just as a reminder, you can create a new project from scratch or you can do it from an existing directory. And to do that in RStudio, you can go up into File and then New Project. And then this will give you some options either to create a new directory where then you would add in all your files or you can create a project out of a directory that already exists that is not a project already. So if you navigate through these pieces, you can get through and either create one that's fresh or you can take one that you already have and add that like rproj file and that, that functionality of having an R project.